Quarterback Andrew Luck and the Stanford Cardinal move center stage tonight. The Heisman Trophy favorite greeted his father Oliver earlier. Stanford's opponent is high flying Oregon, led by running back LaMichael James. These two teams are together, averaging better than 94 points a game. A Pac 12 championship hangs in the balance. You are looking live at a sold out Stanford Stadium. The setting for the Pac 12 game of the year. Unbeaten Stanford against once beaten Oregon. A conference championship and a BCS bid are on the line. The headline story of the hour, Boise State loses to TCU. Stanford, the experts say with a win tonight, will jump ahead of Alabama. Oregon, though, hopes to derail the Cardinal. Good evening, everybody, and welcome. With my partner, Kirk Kirk Street, I'm Brett Musburger. Thanks for dropping by. Herbie, we talk about the Heisman Trophy favorite, Andrew Luck, yep. but this Stanford attack is much more than number 12. Yeah, you're right. And we've been watching Stanford with Andrew Luck for a long time, and it's easy nationally to get caught up in, in his allure and his hype. But I'll tell you what, Stanford is really about their running game, the power running game of Stephon Taylor and the committee of backs that they have. So if you're Oregon, you got to load up to try to stop Taylor and the physicality of Stanford. This is the power play. They will run this all night tonight with a backside guard will kick out and open up a big hole. What this does is it makes the defense really get locked in on defending the run. And that's where Andrew Luck can get you because the safeties start to get their eyes locked into the backfield. And Kobe Fleener, who might be the top tight end in the country, can get behind coverage. And that's what Oregon faces. Kind of a cat and mouse game there between the safeties of Oregon, the linebackers of Oregon, crowding that line of scrimmage to stop that running game, try to get Andrew Luck into some obvious passing downs. Now the quack attack. You were on the field. LaMichael James, the heart and soul, you said he's ready to go. Well, he's healthy, without a doubt. And I, in fact, I think he's been pointing to this game against Andrew Luck and the Stanford team all year long. But again, it's another team that the Michael James gets a lot of the hype because of the preseason talk and the Heisman talk. But to me, Darren Thomas is this key. Coming off a game where he played pretty well against Washington. And if you're Stanford, you have to make a decision. Are we going to crowd the line of scrimmage and stop LaMichael James and Kenyon Barner the way last year Stanford did? Well, if you do that, you leave yourself one-on-one -on, -one on the perimeter. And this is where Darren Thomas has got to step up. He threw a big touchdown pass last year to Jeff Mayo. Isolated one-on-one -on -one coverage. The new man this year is Dak, the Anthony Thomas, the true freshman who's a running back, who's playing receiver. They're going to look to try to get him isolated against this Stanford secondary. And if they do, Darren Thomas is going to look him up if he's isolated for some big plays in the past. Dr. Pepper 10, the Pac-12 for the first time. The two at the top of the Pac-12 North. And if Stanford wins, they wrap up the title and they will host the conference's first ever championship game on Friday night, December 2nd. Now, David Shaw is with our Aaron Andrews down below, so let's go to Aaron. Brent, thanks. Coach, you told me today one of your biggest concerns, number 21. I know you can't stop LaMichael James, but what's key in containing him tonight? We got a gang tackle. You know, we don't want to make this a whole battle of one on one tackles. We get a multiple halves to the party and try to bring him down. So much hype surrounding this game, so much on the line. Before your guys ran out, what was your final message? Final message to play our game, you know, to use the energy of the crowd to play the best game and the biggest game. Thanks for your time. Thanks, All right, Brent. We'll kick it off. Stanford won the toss and elected to receive, and Rob Beard has returned as his kicker. A lot of Oregon fans, of course, have traveled down for the great Northwest. There's young Montgomery, a freshman. So our journey begins here. Montgomery from the three will come out slips and he is down and folks that turf is a story it had rained here yesterday it's moist and Herbie you saw down below that it grass is a little bit long it's a little bit of a home field advantage against <laughs> the speed of the ducks would you say yeah without a doubt and it is very slick and it's something to keep an eye on throughout this game with the quick quickness we have from Oregon and from Stanford now Andrew Luck of course that we've talked a lot about him the experience the expertise kind of the offensive coordinator out on the field for the Cardinal tonight they'll put a lot of responsibility on his shoulders tonight at the line of scrimmage Stefan Taylor is his running back they try to establish the run game first Nick Aliota the defensive coordinator of Oregon certainly knows that here comes Stefan Taylor and they stop him after and he keeps on going he did a good job of moving the pile Kirby just what you were talking about he, he is very very powerful and I think along with the vision that he has in the field with this offensive line he was stopped there about for a, a gain of a yard maybe two yards 
but he kept pushing the pile. And, Brent, we're going to keep talking about this. On early downs, they're going to try to run the ball. The play-action pass on first and ten. You can see Oregon there, nine guys up close to the line of scrimmage. From the pistol, Luck's first pass of the game. Throws to the right sideline, high and incomplete. Fleener, the tight end, was the intended target, and it was a little bit high. And that brings up a third down, Herbie, and take a look at our impact player. Uh, Andrew Luck and Stephon Taylor, we've talked about the impact they're going to have on this game. Kobe Fleener is a man to keep an eye on, number 82. Probably the favorite target of Andrew Luck and the third fastest player on this team, even though he is a tight end. And then Chase Thomas, 44 on the other side on defense for the Cardinal, brings tremendous amount of leadership and inspiration to that defense. Third down and six. Fleener now flexes from the right side of the line. Luck is going to flare the ball, and Gaffney into the game cannot get to the first down. Read well by Michael Clay, number 46, the linebacker, doing a superb job. Folks, here comes the punting team on the field for Stanford, and this is a story. Only the ninth three and out to this entire year for the Cardinal. Michael Clay, Brent, you're all over it. He's locked up one on one in man coverage, and he had him. From the very beginning, he was able to set his sights there and use the speed to get to the perimeter. So the only team with a better average as far as three and outs are concerned that Herbie talked about, USC. And so here is the Michael, Michael James is back deep. They put him on punt return coverage, and he makes the fair catch. And so now here comes the quack attack led by Darren Thomas. And of course, LaMichael James and what Chip Kelly wants is a lot of possessions in a game. He scores so fast. He doesn't worry about time of possession, but he will worry about number of possessions. And Herbie three and out works right in his favor. Yeah, and the tempo now becomes a concern. You will see how quickly they go to the tempo. But Darren Thomas' ability to manage this offense, running and throwing tonight will be a big key for the Ducks attack. LaMichael James is right behind the quarterback. And Deanne Thomas flares out to the right and this is Darren Thomas the quarterback who was brought down after a couple of yards on the play one thing that Chip Kelly loves to do is what you call window dressing a lot of different formations to go along with the tempo try to get the defense confused and then get that ball snapped before they're aligned well, Michael thrown for a loss by the Stanford front that time Trent Murphy from Phoenix, Arizona. He led the charge. Well, the, the kryptonite to this offense is penetration. We've seen him in the bigger games against some of the SEC opponents. What's happened up front, and if you're going to stop LaMichael James, it's as much about your defensive line getting upfield and fighting through the blocks as anything. Now the Ducks are in third and 11. Dern to put up his first pass, and it is incomplete. Batamasi with the coverage. Batamasi's out of Silver Spring, Maryland, and he had tight coverage on that throw, and so it is now three and out for the Ducks. Uh, give, give the Cardinal, it kind of gives them, I think, a boost after the way their offense went out. Both offenses may be feeling one another out, but the Cardinal up front that time just beating the Oregon offensive line on all three of those downs. Jackson Rice to punt it, and Terrell is back deep through Terrell. A beautiful punt. Drives Terrell back, and he's out of bounds inside the 10-yard line. The Stanford offensive line, Herbie, is a is a big story. With number 55, Jonathan Martin, and number 52, David DeCastro leading the way. Two of the very highly ranked prospective NFL players, both first-round draft choices. Martin is at left tackle. DeCastro's at right guard if you want to take a peek at these two fellows. And here is Taylor tiptoeing behind the right side into Castro. Uh, uh, Herbie, you and I, we think this is one of the best offensive lines in the country. Without a doubt. And we've had Wisconsin and I, I think Wisconsin is probably about the only other offensive line across the board you could put on the same page with this group. I think this group, because of the two superstars with DeCastro and Martin and the ath overall athletic ability, uh, I would give the nod to this team. And you can see they're not going away from their power play. The first play there, they pull that backside guard again. They're not going to stop running it all night. Now they're convinced that they can hold out Aliota's rush 
Now they bring up a, a blocker Gaffney back in and Andrew takes off and on the move he is so accurate Whalen's first catch of the game and the Ducks do not let him get the first but down defense uh, moving it's going to be a constant again chess match one thing about Nick Aliotti very multiple they'll show a 4-3 they'll show a 3-4 based on their defensive linemen they're going to move people on ground and coverage try to create as much confusion as they can for luck in this offense so they get the spot and they say thank you very much and it is a first down and 10 and you can see all the shifting that the Cardinal will do throughout the course of the game. Long handoff to Taylor, and he's out to the 21 yard line. This is where they give Andrew Locke the ability to read coverage. You notice he's not always looking over the sidelines, he's calling the plays at the line of scrimmage. Stays right on the ground. Taylor slips his way, and this will bring up a third down at the 25-yard line. That's the second time now we've seen a Stanford player slip. Need four for the first down. Pressure coming. On the move, he can throw accurately incomplete that time, and Whalen was very well covered by Eddie Pleasant. Receivers where they're trying to make adjustments. Griff Whalen at the top of the screen. You can see how he goes down. He's able to get back up on his feet, but a tremendous effort by Eddie Pleasant. Look at Whalen trying to make a cut. He goes down. He's lucky enough to try to uh, respond to that. But I'll tell you what, Eddie Pleasant, that's the area that he has improved the most, is in coverage. The former linebacker now playing safety for the second year. James is back again, and David Green to punt. So LaMichael is the return man. And this one will give Oregon decent field position. The great sights in the United States, the Golden Gate Bridge. And if you haven't seen it, Make a trip. First down and 10 now for the Ducks who went three and out with their first possession in case you just joined us. And Michael's got no day. Thomas cut him off and there is nothing doing. Brent, right now, it's early in the game. But look at the battle up front. Look at the line of scrimmage, which way it's going. Is there any question? I don't care how good you are as a running back and how sophisticated Chip Kelly's scheme is. If the boys up front aren't going to help you out any better than that, it's going to be a long night for this offense. Second down. Nothing doing again for LaMichael James, and that was Terrence Stevens. Big Terrence Stevens, number 99. Third down and 10. In trouble. Going to be a big time sack, and that's going to be an intercepted. Picked off by Stanford, unless the whistle blew. Matt Massafilo had early on the field is that the runner's forward progress will stop before he passes the ball. Fourth and then, of course, it's intercepted by Murphy, but Massafilo gets right in there, and again, you get Oregon to third down. I was surprised at Darren that's, Thomas. That's intentional hit. grounding. And then he picks the well, ball. Then it's off. interception. Yeah, I mean, exactly. It's either for progress or an interception. I mean, he's, he appears to be still battling for for uh, for his life there, but Massafilo again gets pressure. So we have come to an offensive explosion as Terrell is down, and guess what? A defensive standoff <laughs> breaks out. Go figure, Herbie. Here we go with Aaron Luck. He has been luckless against this defense so far but they're a gaping hole opens for Taylor. Let me give you an update Brent first about the grass situation. Talk to the head of football operations for Stanford Matt Doyle about it. He said a couple of weeks ago when they played Washington it got really torn up so they added new grass. It did rain last night as you mentioned so very slippery. I'll give you a point about Oregon's cleats right after this Brent. Second and three Gaffney checks into the game. Gaffney first down explodes on a big running hole as they stick with the running game. Brent, you talked about it, the power play. Watch Yankee, the backside guard, pulling around. Really good block there. Also, Ryan Hewitt leading the way, overpowering that right side. What a block also by Mike and Boy. They just, that's that's the way you execute the power establish play. Establish that run game. They want to stay balanced. We'll see Luck throw it before the night's over, obviously. And here he is on first down under pressure. Up in the air. Knocked incomplete. What a great play by that offensive lineman. There was pressure coming, but it was the offensive lineman who saved the day. 
for Andrew Luck. Lacombo comes off the edge. He's lined up on Griff Whalen. He comes all the way off the slot receiver. Boy, that was a close call. Andrew Luck just started, I'll tell you, that, that he pump faked it, and then he got rid of the ball again. Lacombo came on that blitz. Nobody picked him up off the back down and 10 now for the Cardinal. There's a slip, so let's go back to Aaron, and let's talk about all this slipping here. Brent, just to add on Oregon's cleats, I did just speak with their equipment manager about it. They're actually wearing detachable cleats where they can add a longer cleat to grip the grass here. Only two players have chosen to do that, Kenyon Barner and LaMichael James. Also, I asked about the length of the grass. It's effect is it affecting Oregon? Chip Kelly says, I never get caught up in that kind of stuff. It looked to me like the Stanford trainer was going over to get a fresh pair of shoes for somebody, too. So it is certain now that the length of the cleats are becoming a bit of an issue and the fellas will get those changed as this game progresses Herbie as you know third and nine now and Luck has got plenty of time intercepted a horrendous throw and Stucky is upended by Luck at the 20 yard line and let's give Nick Aliotti a lot of credit here showing a look and showing pressure and then as the ball snapped they drop back into, into coverage and I don't think Andrew Luck, who was locked in there to his receiver, even had a feel that Stucky was sitting back there. They showed the blitz, and then they dropped back into coverage. Luck's looking left. By the time he comes back to his right, Stucky's there. Now, the one good thing is, as a quarterback, you never want to give up on the play, but a poor decision that time by Andrew Luck. But Luck did save a touchdown with that tackle at the 20. Now, Darren Thomas keeps it on the option. And picks up nine yards, just shy of the ten. It's an interception, and all of a sudden, an offense that couldn't do anything right picks up nine yards on first and ten. And here comes Thomas, the young man nicknamed Black Mamba, and he could not get away from Terrence Brown, the defensive back who made a sensational stop in open field, and that's what you have to do against the Ducks. Tackle in space. And Michael James makes a nice block. This play looked like it had a chance, but that's what everybody wanted to see. Could this Stanford defense make plays against the Anthony Thomas and LaMichael James in space? That time they did. Third and short. LaMichael twists to the three-yard line. It's first and goal for Oregon. Howell bringing him down at the three, and the Ducks are quacking. A great execution here, and here comes Darren Thomas again. The Michael won't get there. Thrown back by the middle. They've been inside this red zone area 42 times. They've come away with 32 touchdowns. That's 76% and fifth in the country down in this area. Second down and goal. Juggle on the snap. Darren keeps it on the move. High and caught. Touchdown. Oregon strikes first. Two and I working the back of the end zone. He threw this football on time, giving Two and I a chance to get his feet down. He's got possession of the football, but Darren Thomas, it shows you an ability there to throw the ball. So there is that spread one point or two. They snap it. They're going to throw for two. The trickery caught. Got it. It's eight nothing. They throw back to Jeff Palmer. That's the thing with these guys. I mean, it, they always come up with a new wrinkle. Yeah. Scores and then adds the two-point conversion off of one of their variety of formations as Stewart picks it up and he is down at the 22-yard line. This is what anybody who defends Oregon understands. You think, okay, are they going to go for this? Are they going to they going to snap it? This is crazy. You've got the holder out there. Go ahead, Brent. Well, over here you've got Paulson, the tight end. He chucks it. And Paulson. The Palmer. Did you have that written down in your card that this I've was? I've got the it play? all. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Paulson played quarterback in high school. So, you know, he has some experience throwing the ball, but you never know, again, what you're going to expect to see from Oregon, even early in a game like this. So they go out by eight, and they come back with Taylor, the Cardinal here, on their first down from the 22. Now let's go. The last time that Andrew Luck was out there, the pressure, the mix, the way Oregon's mixing up their looks, he came back to the right, did not even feel Stucky, and he makes the uh, the poor decision. And on the other side, Darren Thomas, who's known with his ability to run the ball, makes a great throw and throws it on time. 
And uh, the difference in the game right now is the turnover and the touchdown by Oregon. Second down and three, and Taylor bangs for the first down. Complete. And that's to his tight end, Kobe Fleener. As we go for an update, is Robert Flores. All right, Robert. And so the kicking troubles continue for Alabama. And here, Stanford trailing Oregon by eight points. And Taylor battling for the first down marker. Wilkerson is now in, but they hand it to Hewitt. And he barges straight ahead for the first down, just shy of midfield. So they run the Wildcat. And it is Gaffney keeping it. And Gaffney continues to battle. By the way, Herbie. I was going to say now. <laughs> that they, they say they've taken it away. He's fighting towards the end of this play. Did the ball come out? Looked like his knee may have been down. Wow. Troy he, Hill, the corner there, Herbie, is in wrestling for the football. Sure is. Yeah. Evidence enough then to... Say that Stanford keeps the football on that Based angle. Based on that, let's see some of the other looks. I mean, it looks like his right knee is down. Oregon is attacking that football. You, know, you got Gaffney, who, again, like all backs, trying to fight for those extra yards. And based on the, the, the replays that we've seen so far, I mean, that, that one look to show his right knee down as Hill's fighting for that football. Fred Gallagher is our replay official. For further review, the runner was down. Yeah. The ball to come in. For the half ball, I'm going to check and see if it's close enough for a first down. And, you know, I think a lot of people, when Jim Harbaugh decided to go to the NFL, were very interested in seeing this Cardinal team this year with David Shaw as the leader to see if they could maintain that edge, that toughness, that mental and physical toughness that they've played with the last couple years. And, you know, so far, here they are, fourth in the BCS standings and definitely showing an ability to play with that same attitude that Jim Harbaugh created uh, when he was here. And that's Montgomery, the freshman, motion through the backfield. And here's Stefan Taylor uh, powering ahead for what appeared to be a first down. Play action, roll to the right, and Taylor drops it. Let us bring up a couple of quotes, actually. Now, let me, let me explain Steve Sarkeesian. He said this this week because he's getting ready to play USC, folks. And he did help recruit Matt Barkley. Mark Barclay's his guy. Coach, it's, yeah. his, it's his guy. We understand that. Yeah. However, with Phil Sims, I respectfully disagree. I've seen Andrew Luck now for several years, and he can flat out throw with those guys who play Sunday football. Here comes Andrew Luck handing off to Taylor. Taylor cuts through the middle, hangs for a first down. And this is what Andrew Luck right now is doing. He's managing an offense, and he's relying on Taylor and this running game to help him out. But Brent, how do you evaluate whether or not he's an NFL quarterback or make a statement like that when he's dealing with possession receivers outside of Chris Wusu, who's been banged up most of the year? When he gets receivers that can run, like NFL receivers, then I think people will see what he can do, throwing the ball. Taylor finds daylight, and he is bang pleasant. Heavy hitter. Was a linebacker until they made a safety out of him. And you could see the power. Did you think that Oregon's ahead? <laughs> Minus one? Because of a big sack, obviously. And Stanford, 98 yards. They've dominated everything except the scoreboard, the most important number. And now they're in the red zone. And for Stanford folks, the red zone is a story. Taylor could not get to the first down. An amazing statistic with 41 touchdowns out of 52 possessions. You're talking close to 80% of the time they get touchdowns when they get in the red zone. It has everything to do with execution and decision making by Andrew Luck down in this area. There's your jumbo offensive line. They move in an extra tackle, and he gets the first down. Stephon Taylor. Stephon Taylor uh, over 60 yards rushing already here in the first half of this game. Motion through the formation. He's flexed off to the left. He's number 82. 
Luck is looking in that direction. Fires wide open. Touchdown. Went outside Whalen. Griff Whalen. Doesn't show up when you just look at a box score. You see highlights. Towie handles adversity. That was a big drive for the Cardinal. Eric Whitaker misses the extra point. This is Huff juggling it, picking it up at the goal line. Coming out and run out of bounds at about the 15-yard line. Brent, you and I talked about Kobe Fleener and how Andrew Luck likes to get him the ball. There he is. He went in motion, but two defenders go with him, and it freed up Griff Whalen. So Andrew Luck seeing that he sees a safety and a linebacker take Fleener, and Griff Whalen's out there isolated against a freshman corner. His eyes, he's locked in on that safety. He sees the safety take Fleener. It opens it up, and he actually made that throw when Griff Whalen set the route up with a little move to the outside. He threw it to the inside. Perfect timing and a great throw. Now the Ducks, Darren Thomas on the move, and he completes first down pass to Rashawn Vaughn. Well, Michael James is finally brought down. He made the most of it. And Darren fires complete for the first down, and that works to Paulson as there's a penalty flag thrown on the play. Holding while the ball was in the air on the defense, number three. That's a 10-yard penalty, first down. And they were locked up in man-to-man -man coverage. They actually got good pressure on Darren Thomas. He sat in there and showed great poise to make that throw. There's that quick handoff. And streaking out is a young man by the name of DeAnthony Thomas from Crenshaw High School in Los Angeles. Darren Thomas, handoff to LaMichael, who powers his way for the first down. We take a look at this freshman who originally committed to verbally to USC and then changed his mind, rated number one, the ESPNU Top 100. Ran the fastest prep 200 meter in the nation a year ago. And Snoop Dogg tagged the nickname on him that's going to last for a long time. Darren Thomas pulls it out, fires right sideline, too high, incomplete. It'll be second down. Kelly always tells us that it takes him three or four series to really get a feel for how a defense is going to defend him. He says, we could study film all week, and then that night, everything that we've studied goes out, to, out the window because we're seeing some different things because nobody sees this kind of offense. The adjustment that I think he's going to have to make, as I said, is Darren Thomas in the perimeter pass game to help the battle up right now at the line of scrimmage. Second down and 10. Great cut by Anthony to daylight. Adios. Touchdown, La Michael James, the leading rusher in the nation. Clawing his way back into that Heisman Trophy argument after losing to LSU back on Labor Day weekend. A 58-yard touchdown run. Everybody knows it who plays Oregon. And here is Maldonado tacking on the extra point. When LaMichael and DeAnthony Thomas get to daylight, it's over. So we are back where Oregon has opened up a little daylight. And the Ducks are going back to the drawing board to see what other magic they can come up with. And here is Rob Beard who a year ago in Eugene had one of the great onside kicks that we've seen in the last few years. No need for it here. And Montgomery, the freshman, out to the 34-yard line. Ball, but they kind of stayed in who they really are. And Michael James makes two outstanding cuts. The safety, Delano Howe, takes a really poor angle, maybe underestimating whether or not James could get through there. But look at these two cuts. I mean, it looks like he's running on ice. He's just kind of tiptoeing around, somehow maintains his balance along with that quick acceleration that he has, maintains the balance, and then when he gets in the open field, of course, he is gone. But how 26, who's missed the last three weeks with an injury, back in the lineup as a veteran here, but makes a, a poor play there on the angle. And that was Gary Campbell, the running back coach, over on the sideline with LaMichael. Taylor is the running back for Luck and the Cardinal. And now he bangs straight ahead into the middle of the Oregon defense. One there is Coach Campbell. You know, he has been up there for many a year, and he just does a terrific job with the with the running backs. And 
the development that you see with these youngsters and, and the maturity that they show under under Gary Campbell is, is really nice to see. Played at UCLA, knows his conference very well, almost a father figure really uh, for all the running backs and has become very, very close to LaMichael James. So here we are with a second and five and there's Hewitt offsetting. Play action. Luck looks for a target. Dances out of trouble. On the move. Fires high, complete first down, and guess who got it? Ryan Hewitt. Luck on the moves as good as any quarterback in the country. Yeah, he sure is. He has Ty Montgomery, the freshman, in the middle of the field, but eventually the athletic ability that he has, keeping the play alive, great coverage downfield, and boy, it makes it tough on Hewitt, but Hewitt's really getting more and more comfortable, and I think the relationship between Andrew Luck and Hewitt continuing to grow week by week because of the more reps that they're playing together. And ball spotted at the 47 here with 10-29, and Taylor. Second down and five for Luck. They keep it on the ground, and nothing doing brings up third down. I want to go back to Klein because a week ago we watched the young man, and you just admire what he brings to the football field. You know, after I got done with the earthquake and everything else last week in Stillwater. You were a YouTube I, sensation, by the way, <laughs> but go ahead. I, I went down to the Kansas State bus, and I asked one of their trainers if they could go get Colin Klein off the bus. I just wanted to shake his hand and congratulate him on his on his oh, effort. He, he, is, uh, he is a true throwback in every sense of the word with his performance. And another, it's great to see Kansas State and, and uh, Colin Klein bounce back today. Yeah, exactly. Trailed the Aggies, rallied. Straight back. Luck fires incomplete as punting, and you saw the Michael is back to see what he can do. James, beautiful high punt. James is going to let this one go for the end zone, try to get it out on the 20, and that's exactly what happens. So the Ducks with the lead, and when you come back, they'll have the football up 15 seconds. Who beat Stanford's John Elway for the Heisman Trophy in 1982? So the Michael James will be given a breather here on this series. And a pitch to Barner and run down beautifully by A.J. Tarpley and a flag. Personal foul, horse collar tackle on the defense, number 17. That's a 15-yard penalty, first down. Stanford trying to state their case here, but Tarpley just, you know, that, that's, he's saying that he grabbed him with his left arm first, but the right arm, you can see it there, he let, had to let go of it. And Barner banging to the left, and Howell, Howell, of course, is playing with that cast. Second and seven. DeAnthony looking fumble. Cardinals got it. Lancaster wraps it up. But it, it looked like he actually got in there and caused the fumble with the club. Not only does the club help him make interceptions, but here it jars the ball loose from the true freshman. DeAnthony Thomas, who had fumble issues early in the year against LSU. And how makes that, that football makes the play actually for Stanford to be able to get the ball loose and they pounce on it. Let's see if they can capitalize. So how receiving some attention where we have to point it out a little shaky and now Andrew Luck comes back and here comes Stefan Taylor to Heisman trophy candidates here tonight. One a running back for Michael James with that huge run and the touchdown and Andrew Luck with a touchdown but a costly interception also. It's the interesting thing. You, you, for the most part, seven carries. LaMichael James didn't have more than five yards. And then that one big carry, he's able to bounce out and make a big play. Come right back with Taylor. And if they give him the spot, he'll get the first down. Coaches talk about eye discipline with the safeties and linebackers. They start peeking into the backfield instead of reading their keys. And that's where that balance comes into play for Luck with the play-action pass. Two receivers on the left. Luck comes back into the middle. And it is complete to Whalen and a penalty flag after the play. Michael, Michael Clay. Special foul on the defense, number 96. Unnecessary roughness. That's a 15 yard penalty. First down. It was Clay. I believe he gave us the wrong number, yeah. I think. Let's yeah. He said 96, Deion Jordan, but Michael Clay, who's back in coverage, actually comes in here and lowers his head, crown of the helmet, right in 
to the helmet of Griff Whalen. Could see players again slipping all over the place. Flares Taylor fires in zone. Incomplete. And he was throwing to Montgomery. He's throwing off his back foot here again because of the pressure. Kiki Alonso gets in there. You see how he's not coming through? That's affecting his accuracy and not allowing to come through and put the ball where he wants to put it. It was really good coverage. Good job by Boyette coming up, high pointing the ball and not getting it away. Second down and 10 from the 21 yard line. Taylor. And he is wrestled down by Alonzo. Third and six, and after a shaky extra point, this is probably a four down territory situation for Stanford. We'll have to see how that unfolds. So here is your fourth down as. And play was stopped. I believe they took too much time in getting that kickoff, which is inexcusable. Delay game on the offense. Five yard penalty, fourth down. Perfect. So after missing an extra point, he does come back and hit a field goal. You are. You got him, Herschel Walker. Yeah, baby. How about that, baby? That's a good one. Nails Herschel Walker. Now, Herbie, bonus points. Who was third and fourth? After our guy, can I have a little Good bit group. of? Can I have a Good little group. bit? No, just for fun. Eric Dickerson was third, oh, okay. and Anthony Carter was fourth. Oh my God! How, how's that for a group? Huh? Here we go now. Thomas, the freshman, with ball security on his mind. Michael James now back into the backfield for the Ducks. Play action from Darren. Darren throws downfield, Herbie, and he's got it complete to Bond. Bond's second catch of the day. Wanted to try to throw it downfield. Delano Howe is out of the lineup still. Now they run, and the Michael James, an easy first down. See the umpire here with an assist. Carrington, the safety, trying to come up and run support, and the Michael James all of a sudden starting to find some real estate in between the tackles. And so, Chip Kelly. Once he finds something, remember what we said. He attacks your weakness. You can see the defense moving. They come up throwing, and Huff goes down as he just across the 40 yard line. DeAnthony Thomas is alongside Darren Thomas, the quarterback. DeAnthony is stuffed. Matt Massafilo, 98. Both young men are in there, completely dominated the left side of the Oregon offensive line with quickness. They both slanted to the inside. From Stanford's 41-yard line. Darren is back under pressure, drops off the screen. DeAnthony Thomas coming down the sideline, going for the end zone. And he steps in for the touchdown on a fourth and seven call by Chip Kelly. Didn't even think about punting in that situation. Again. And I want to tell you, folks, this play will show you the speed of DeAnthony Thomas. And he tacks it on. 22 to nine. Great, great call here. Man-to-man -man coverage on fourth down. What a call here. And I want you to look at the linebacker, Tarpley. He is man-to-man -man right here with the Anthony Thomas. He's going to try to stay with him. He shows blitz and he backs out. Once he backs out, he actually gets picked up by Mark Asper, the right guard. He just did a screen. He just kind of got in his way, prevented Tarpley from being able to get out there. And once Tarpley wasn't there, everybody else has their back turned because they're in man-to-man -man coverage. And by the time they turn around, there's no way you're going to stop the Anthony Thomas in the open field. Montgomery up into short of the 20-yard line. Phoenix is coming up. You check that out. During all those commercials on those NFL games. Slip over there and watch. Watch my man smoke. <laughs> and luck in underneath now. Cleaner. Cleaner. 
Makes a great grab at the 49-yard line with Pleasant draped all over him. What a terrific catch by the tight end. Well, Fleener is his guy, and it's 6'6", 254 pounds. Eddie Pleasant doesn't even know the ball's in the air. We talked about how much Pleasant has improved in coverage. He had two interceptions last week against Washington. That time in man-to-man -man coverage, a mismatch, and Luck found it. Straight back, wide open, and that is Toilolo, speaking of another tight end. The middle is open. It's dropped. Watch him look off to the left, settle in, step into the pocket, and make a perfect throw to the tight end. Tololo is actually 6'8", 262 pounds, and he got his eyes down looking and waiting for that safety ready to hit Stanford him. Stanford with all three of its timeouts. Stewart, fine blocker, checks in as a protector. Under pressure, fires complete to Whalen. Comes back to his go-to guy. He's the Wes Welker of this offense, folks. If you need someone to go to, it is number 11, 17, Whalen. And how about Nick Aliotti dialing up the pressure? Avery Patterson got free. They brought one more than Stanford could handle. Luck sticks in there and makes the accurate throw. First down and 10 across the 40-yard line. Luck and the receiver slipped after making the Getting more comfortable. They're going to call the timeout. Have three of them. They needed to use one Washington here. Washington State, that's going to become a big story here for everybody now. Here it is last year up in Eugene. This turned the game around. Down on a heap. Watch this next hit. Lethal. Now, we had this game. McDonald suspended a half for that hit. Oregon State last week. And the youngster out of the game. Now, he has been wearing a mouthpiece that registers the G-force on the hits. All right, not everybody on Stanford's warning. They're doing research into concussions, and it measures when the head whips. And there is the machine over there that measures the blows, and these are the special mouthpieces that are being worn by players, and Owosu had it on. The one that registered the highest was that hit against Washington State. But the G-forces and the concussion, that's why we do not have a Wosu here tonight. Yeah, it's a shame. He has taken a lot of hits, and I don't know about you, but if they handed me that mouthpiece, I'd be, I'd be nervous. Luck fires back to the middle, and he's got his first down, and there's Waylon again. Fox stops with the first down, buys a little bit of time here, feels the pressure, doesn't panic, just moves off to the right, and right before he gets hit, he finds his man Griff Whalen downfield. Still has the two timeouts. First and ten. Slant. Touchdown. Now Whitaker knocks through an extra point. Put the ball in his hands, make him have to drive the length of the field. He saw exactly what he wanted. He threw into the teeth of this defense. Safety's up in the middle of the field. And then he, he splits the safety, Boyette. And the nickelback who was up close to the line of scrimmage. Remember, Oregon's been pressuring him. But he saw that matchup from the very beginning. Before he got his hands on the football, he knew he wanted to go over because of the, the way the defense was aligned. Big stories. If you haven't heard, Boise State loses at home to TCU. TCU goes for a two-point conversion late in the game. And then Boise misses a field goal coming down to the closing seconds. And that will jar, shake up the BCS standings. Boys will tell you about that at halftime. Kick off along the ground here with 24 seconds. Now, the question is here, Herbie, stopping this duck attack. And if you think that Oregon's going to sit on this, you're crazy. I mean, Chip Kelly, one of the most aggressive play callers in the country before a half. He's going to try to find a matchup and try to get the ball downfield. He has all three timeouts. Darren Thomas flips it back to Barner. Barner. And Barner will step out of bounds with 11 seconds left. 40 yards, I believe, is the kicker's long. And they'll stop the clock here with five seconds on this completion again to Barner. They've got five seconds. Now, remember I said his, his longest is about 40. And Chip Kelly will keep on attacking here. Let's see what he comes up with. Darren is back, fires incomplete, and time runs out. Paulson was working the sideline, 
hoping to get that pass with one second left and out of bounds, but it was not Friend, the thanks. They had been getting pressure on Andrew for most of that first half. What was the difference for him in that two-minute drill there? That's just that's where he thrives. He thrives on at the line of scrimmage. Uh, we gave him some calls. He made some calls. You know, just like the SC game, that's what he does best. You had mentioned LaMichael James, gang tackling, getting on him. He's getting going, especially in between tackles. Any adjustment you make there? The thing is, we, we got to squeeze the running lanes, and we got to get him on the ground. David, thanks. thanks. What's interesting is Stanford rushed for 111 yards and Oregon for 106. This is Huff from the 10 yard line on the short kickoff. And Huff is down at the 26 yard line and a look at tonight's Southwest Airlines playbook. We had some big, big plays in this game. Here's the Michael James for 58 yards and then Herbie they turned to Anthony Thomas loose and what's interesting here is a fourth down call a screen pass man-to-man -man coverage they got Tarpley out of position and he just streaks untouched down the sidelines and right before the half Andrew Luck seven of eight leads the Cardinal down the field and puts the touchdown and gets uh, Stanford back in this game so it's a first down and Darren Thomas keeps it he is ripped down at the 30-yard line by Batamasi. That's a big hit there by Batamasi. But Darren Thomas, you know, it's interesting, Brandon, he hadn't run the football much this year. Coming into tonight, only 26 attempts in the entire year. And it's and talking to Chip Kelly about that this year, he said, you know, we haven't needed him to run the ball much because of our backs and because we've been up so big in most of our games. Now Darren is looking to throw the screen pass and a jump catch by the Michael James for a first down at the 40 yard line. So they bring Thomas into the backfield as a running back and DeAnthony takes the handoff. Darren finds Huff wide open. Huff beats the corner. Breaks free for a touchdown. How about this? A missed tackle leads to a touchdown for Josh Huff. A 59-yard scoring strike. Maldonado tacks on the extra point. So the touchdown plays tonight for Oregon. 58, 41, and 59 yards. Stanford with the nation's longest winning streak. They have won 17 in a row. The Ducks' last loss in conference play was here on this field a couple years ago. Montgomery takes a return to the 35-yard line. Stanford is loading up to stop the run. And Brent, one of the things that concerns anybody who's seen Stanford is the corner play on this team. Good throw by Darren Thomas. But right there, you see Terrence Brown, the sophomore, fall down. Now he regains himself. He's in position to make a play, but he's isolated all by himself one-on-one. -on -one. He's got to make that play right there. It's tough to do against Huff. And then maybe the best tackler on the defense, Michael Thomas, he misses in the open space as well. And that's, that's one of the themes of this game. Oregon speed in space. How would Stanford do in the open field and making tackles? Let's see if Stanford opens it up a little bit quicker or they stick with the power running game and it will be Taylor on first down picking up a couple of yards as he runs behind the left side over there and Jordan in on the stop and Stucky with him. One thing you'll see from Nick Aliotti in this situation is an ability to continue to take risks pin their ears back and coming after Andrew Luck reaching deep into the playbook when he goes to the center's wristband that's when they go deep in the playbook Aliotto stands up I don't know if you have to reach deep in the playbook for that one <laughs> <laughs> there goes. I would think that Andrew would have it on his wristband both of them wear wristbands Power because of the right. extensive number of plays <laughs> that Andrew Luck has there's his wristband you can see and they're going over to the center now. It's a great shot. It is, isn't it? Luck, pump fake, receiver, sacked, going down. Taken down 
at the 34-yard line. Taylor Hart right here. He comes right here, a little out cut. But watch how the safety and also the linebacker, DeWitt Stuckey, try to take him away. You could see that he wanted to go there. The corner also got into the coverage. They completely were dialed in to go into the big tight end, and they took him out of, out of position. Penalty flag. False start on the offense, number 43. That's a five-yard penalty. Fourth down. That is four penalties against Stanford tonight. Michael James, fair catch. Fumble! Stanford pounces on it, and Oregon tries to steal it back, and they can't. Stanford football on the Michael James turnover. Looks like Ed Reynolds got in there and coverage, and Michael James, a miscue here. It's exactly, he calls the fair catch. He's in position. The ball goes right through his arms. And Stanford pounces on this football. This is the break that they needed. It's actually Bernard that gets down there. Stephon Taylor is the back. Hewitt, the fullback. Luck going to put it up now on first down. Got the slant and just didn't get it there. Now they've got second down and 10. Jumbo look up front. Extra blocker for Taylor to the 30-yard line, and this will bring up a third down. Clean and dropped again, Fleener. We saw Toilolo earlier drop a third down, potential conversion, and now it's arguably his, his favorite target, Kobe Fleener, man-to-man -man coverage. He gets the separation, has a chance there at a first down, and now Stanford only converting three of 10 tonight on third down. And that's bad off to the right. That, that's pushed way outside on that field goal attempt. We welcome you back to Stanford, a sellout crowd, and many of whom are very disappointed in the performance of their team here tonight. The Ducks, meanwhile, have been electric. Big plays following big plays, and the Michael James, who fumbled and gave Stanford a scoring opportunity, but they couldn't cash in, gets the first carry. It's not as if Oregon's going to go to a four-corner offense and slow down. They're going to keep trying to put touchdowns up on the board. And here comes Thomas in the middle of that defensive front. And really, the front, the, the, the down linemen have not only held their own, they've, I think they've won that battle, but with this much speed, you have to be perfect with your gap control on every single run by this offense. Darren Thomas takes the snap. Going to throw across the middle and complete. And that time it was fine coverage. And that's Gatewood. Because of his speed and because of the respect that they have for this Oregon speed, they moved him over two weeks ago when Howe got hurt, getting him ready for this game so they could put him out there by himself in one-on-one -on -one coverage. And Terrell fair catches and hangs on at the 31-yard line. Andrew Luck fumbles on the blitz. Aliotta dials it up, and the Ducks are in business again. So Aliotto on a first and 10, dials up a blitz and watch the heat. And Brent, there's some miscommunication on the left side of the offensive line. Looked like Jonathan Martin, the left tackle, an All-American, was moving to his outside. Nobody picked up Turner, and he had a clear shot to be able to knock that ball away from Andrew Luck. Fake the pitch to him. Darren Thomas looks in zone, fires a tough slant, caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Paulson. He has thrown for a two-point conversion, and now the veteran tight end catches the touchdown pass, and the Ducks are starting to pull away. See Chip Kelly pulling Darren Thomas aside, patting him on the chest, saying that a boy. Great throw, low and away, where Paulson has a chance to make that catch. And let's take another look at that Absolutely. one. Absolutely. Ball's perfectly thrown. You can see it is loose there, but you can't tell as it comes down onto the ground. What was the initial? Let's take a look at this one, Herbie. That's the one right there. Yeah, that ball's down. I believe that Looks there's like some the evidence nose. that they may yeah. turn this one over. We'll see. The nose of the ball on that shot. This will be another good look at it here. Yeah, it looks like the nose of the ball touched the ground. I agree. 
So we'll let the replay officials sort this one. After review, the receiver did not maintain control when he went to the ground. Incomplete pass. It'll be second down. Gets them straight with his offensive line. Here's where Michael spins and goes nowhere. Tough. Gardner is in there. Tough, tough sledding. Penalty flag now comes Going flying. There were two other. fouls on the play. Personal foul on the defense. Personal foul on the offense. Those penalties offset. They're down. So they're... 2-A and, and Gatewood watch, locked up. Watch the 2-A kind of starts the, the war there. Takes a swing at it. I mean, they're going after each other. It's the wear and tear of the battle out on the edge there over. Cardinal trying to dig in here defensively. Thomas fires. And 2-A does not get the first down. He's already struck for one big touchdown. On fourth down, doesn't give the defense much time. Comes right out and goes for it. Touchdown to Michael James. By moving quickly like that, you catch a defense off balance. And tonight, Chip Kelly has struck twice on fourth downs. And that's confidence in a quarterback and a confidence in an offensive philosophy. Staying true to who you are. Look at the defense is still moving. They're still running around trying to get a line. Always a great sign for Oregon and Chip Kelly when they go to that hurry up and you see linebackers and safety still running around the ball snap. They have no time to react and a touchdown and aggressive nature of Chip Kelly pays off for the Ducks. Now Donato adds the extra point. Have we had a, a fun year in throwing yes. the Michigan Notre Dame game. We've had some some close calls. The Ducks came into this game with an attitude. They wanted to prove a point. Stanford did too, but right now the Ducks are looking closer at the, the trophy than, than the Cardinal. And their coach's trophy presented by Dr. Pepper that will be awarded in New Orleans to the 2012 All-State BCS Championship Game winner. And the Ducks got there a year ago, and they were beaten by Auburn. They have only one loss. Boise, unbeaten, lost today. How far will they fall? Sanford's in trouble. How far could they fall, and how far... Up the ladder to the Ducks go. We'll find out tomorrow night. But right now, first things first. Beard slips on the kickoff. Comes up short. Fielded by Montgomery. Montgomery now out of bounds at the 30-yard. The quack attack, if you will. And it has been led by, well, their overall offense. What can you say, Irby? Well, they've, they've had big plays. I mean, and you look at time of possession, and you look at how many plays that uh, Stanford's been able to run. But at the end of the day, it's it's been the opportunities that Oregon's been able to create for themselves and an aggressive nature by Chip Kelly. Wide open, it's Whalen. Whalen to the 48-yard line. Stanford. Whalen. And Andrew Luck steps up. There's a penalty flag incomplete. Personal foul on the defense. Hands to the face. Number 31. That's a 15-yard penalty. First down. Uh, they're putting Patterson, who's a, a very physical defensive back, up close against a true freshman. Gets his hand up in the face mask. Look at Andrew Luck. He's, now he's sitting in that pocket, but he's been getting hit a lot tonight. That's another blitz again by the linebacker, Alonzo. So the ball is moved to the 42-yard line of the Ducks, and they bring Gaffney in. Strong run. First down, Gaffney maintains ball control. As he can run, and he slips. Trying to cut back toward the first down as he came across the 25-yard line. They, they don't seem to have real good fit, footing when they're out in open space. I'm going to point out that the Ducks were pretty good in open space <laughs> a few of those couple plays. Of them, yeah. okay. <laughs> Second down and six. Slipping, falling, couldn't get the first down. It's incomplete. It's waved off. If he throws this in front of Toilolo, he catches the ball. 
but with this slick field, he has to come back. And I know you, you think he'd like to make this catch, but still, put the ball in front of him. He catches the ball, and he picks up a first down. Comes back. A first down for Lolo. Came right back to him, and this time much more accurate. Look his head, looking to the left. He's looking at Fleener. He comes all the way back to the right. And that's where you need good pass protection. He came all the way back to the right, so he came off of Fleener. He was double covered again down in this area. Comes back and he finds Toilolo for the first down. Now from the 16-yard line. Luck with Stewart. And the Cardinal moves the pile close to the 11-yard line before Stuckey. And I'll wrestle him to the ground. Give up a quick, easy strike. Make Stanford earn everything that they're going to get. Play action. In zone too high and incomplete. And Fleener well covered that time. Goes empty. Luck firing. And slipping toward Lolo as he was reaching. And I think more than any drive of the night. Stanford has encountered more trouble with its footing. You know, usually a slippery field would favor the offense because you can, you know where you're going to go. You know which way you're going to cut, and you can position your weight to help you have a chance. It's the defense that has to react. Fourth down now. They've got the first down. First down and goal. 307 and there's a penalty flag hang on pick it up either way the defense line up in the neutral zone the penalty will be half the distance to the goal first down and whether they needed that they picked it up either way but now now becomes roll up your sleeves and see who's the tougher man inside the five yard line Gaffney gets the call slashes and he's short of the end zone Outside, on the defense line up in the neutral zone so they come up with the full house look. And they throw to him off a nice fake. So Stewart dances in and they've got one back. Exit a 13 point game. But the bigger issue here is whether or not Stanford's defense is able to come up with some stops. See Clay, who's expecting the run. Doesn't have any chance to get out there. Good call here by Stanford. Oregon obviously expecting the big power back, Stewart, to run the football. They slide him out into the flat. Clay doesn't have any chance to get out there. An easy throw, an easy touchdown. And Brent, you're right. Now it's up to the Cardinal defense. The Ducks field it on the eighth. That's Thomas with that great speed to the 31-yard. You hold your breath every time you touch the ball. Right? <laughs> so Stanford's winning streak. Very much on the line here. They've won 17 straight. 14 straight. Of course, their last conference setback was in Eugene. After taking a 21-3 lead, the Ducks came back and buried him in the second half. Well, Michael James is the running back. Darren keeps it on a beautiful... Beautiful zone read play here, Harvey, with the quarterback keeping it. Yeah, he's reading Chase Thomas, who they've moved down to try to deal with some of this speed. He collapses down on the running back. Easy read for Darren Thomas to pull it out and get upfield. This time, LaMichael James. And he battles his way. It's, it's so interesting to watch LaMichael James just find a little crease. That's all he needs. He is such a perfect fit to this style of offense. His jump cuts, lateral quickness, acceleration upfield. That time he finds his way and gets upfield quickly. From the 47, they'll run the toss play to James. James backs his way across the 40-yard line on a strong run. Second down and two, a toss to Barnum. And he catches a beautiful block 
on that play by Mark Asper. Pulls around. Also, the big center, Grasso, pulls around. You have the receivers, 2 and A downfield. But I just think the patience here by Barner is exceptional. He waited for Asper. He waited for all the blocks. And then once they were made, then he got in behind them and picked up good yards. From the 29-yard line, Darren Thomas goes sideline incomplete. Chips trying to make another adjustment after the Cardinals did their own adjustment. Second down, and it'll be LaMichael James breaking close to a first down. Terrence Brown brings him down, but he's to the 20-yard line. Yeah, and, and Chip Kelly was going crazy on the sideline to make sure he got the play he wanted. And then quickly back, and James is stuffed this time, and there's a penalty There was fly. no play because the defense had 12 players. That's an illegal substitution foul. That's a five-yard foul, which will result in a first down. That's the risk you take when they go to this warp speed and you decide to try to run on the nose guard, Terrence Stevens. Somebody's got to come off. And by the time he realizes he's got to come off, it's Ben Gardner in full sprint. They just stopped the play. So as we move into the fourth quarter, Oregon leads Stanford 36-23, and we continue Dr. Pepper's road to the championship. LaMichael James is ripped down from behind by Trent Murphy. LaMichael steps to the left, cuts, and he is to the three-yard line. And the Ducks may be climbing back into the BCS championship argument also. Pretty good looking performance here tonight so far. Michael, touchdown number three. Uh, again, he slips by, and then once he gets by here, there's the strength, Brent, that we've talked about. That ball looks like it's across the plane to me. It, by the time he touches, doesn't it look like the it's all about where the football is, right? Yeah, maybe he's maybe he's a half yard short. Michael James comes back and look at the quickness. Look, look at Tarpley, the linebacker. He picks up. He's got to deal with a block. Safety comes down. And, and they, boom, just like that, they pick up 12 to 15 yards. Second down. So it will be a second down. Now he's got his third score. Oh. Michael James let his teammates know that he's healthy and that he's been pointing to this game. He's put up some, some big numbers tonight. He's had some help up front, but his acceleration is, is, and his, his vision on display once again for this offense. Maldonado, cue the duck. Kirby already Boise State a loser here. Yeah, and the way this game is going right now, Oregon has the upper hand. Stanford potentially could be eliminated. So you have LSU, Oklahoma State, Alabama. And then it starts to become interesting. Oklahoma, who was off this week. You have Oregon potentially winning a big one here tonight on the road. Arkansas with a big win. The kickoff is fielded at the 12 now by Omanum. And Omanum breaks free. They put him back there instead of Montgomery, and you find return out to the 37-yard line. And you go back to Oklahoma State, who controls its own destiny. Big game at the end of the year in Stillwater, Bedlam, Oklahoma State, and Oklahoma. But you're one potential upset away with Oklahoma State from this becoming a real, real, real heated debate about who could be up there with LSU. I mean, Oregon's trying to state their case right now. If Oklahoma were to beat Oklahoma State, they would be up there in the discussion. Alabama's going to obviously be in the discussion. So on first and 10 for Luck and the Cardinal, fires to Whalen at the 46-yard line. in underneath and again Toilolo slips and you know one of the things about I've always felt about a home team which strikes me as unusual here is that they have more equipment on hand i.e. the longer cleats and the things that can help you from slipping but it is pretty obvious that Oregon's having a better time of it here on this field that pass is thrown high and uh, incomplete and that was Montgomery over there and that that just strikes me as a little bit unusual of course 
both of these schools are Nike schools and for a very good reason. Phil Knight, CEO of that corporation, attended both of these schools, an undergraduate at Oregon, and he got his graduate degree in business here at Stanford. He is right there in the center. That is the legendary co-founder of Nike Incorporated and a very, very nice man who has donated hundreds of millions of dollars to both of these schools. So he has, he's been very generous with his considerable wealth. Taylor goes down and we take a look at the, at the numbers that we came up with. Estimated 300 million to Oregon and to the Stanford Graduate School of Business at least 105 million back in 2006 and so you talk about a man who has supported both of the institutions where he went to school and and there he is watching the game from the radio booth I believe that is for the Oregon Ducks and there's Fleener in underneath and he's down to the 30 yard line he's trying to sustain a drive here in a big third down they finally get the ball thrown to receiver where he's not slipping and when you throw an accurate pass, it allows Fleener to make that catch and get upfield. And, and, you know, that's one of the things that you'd like to see the leadership from Eddie Pleasant. That's what Chip Kelly was trying to say. Hey, big third down, chance to get him off the field. Mm -hmm. We've got to come up with some play. Well, here's first down. Toy Lolo. And he comes across and picks up a first down into the red zone in the 19-yard line. I believe that the... The Cardinal, if I'm not mistaken, they're four for four in the red zone here tonight. Yes, they are. And you see, he continues to use the tight ends. And, and this is where Chris Owusu, in a game like this, where you're in a hurry up, you're playing catch up, you really could use a receiver out on the edge with a great deal of experience. First down. And Whalen with a first and goal. He's man to man against Troy Hill. Gives him a nice shake there at the line of scrimmage. Gets And once he's able to separate from Hill, then it comes down to the timing and a rhythm there between Luck, who you can see in the background, and Whalen. By the time Whalen turned out of that cut, the ball was in the air on the backside shoulder, exactly where it needs to be. So on first and goal, shovel pass inside, and the Ducks actually with very good defense against it. Michael Clay. Pretty good looking linebacker, Harvey. I, I think Michael Clay's had to step up to the leadership that Casey Matthews left his team after a three year starter. Meant so much to the team. The coach is telling us that he's kind of the glue now. Has outstanding speed. He's healthy now. He had an ankle back in week two against Nevada. Outstanding instincts. And they just say the overall defense as a group plays much better when 46 is on the field. Pressure and down goes Luck at the 11-yard line. The heat from Cadu. Interesting, Cadu's father came up to me prior to the game, okay? And he said, will you and Mr. Herbstreit give my son some love tonight? Oh, yeah. I mean, he's a big-time player. Yeah, he sure is. He's battled through some injuries. And really, the last three or four games, Josh Cadu has taken his game to a different level. He has six sacks on the year. And I think they move him down as a defensive end. You know, he's an outside linebacker, exactly. but they move him down when he faces teams like this because of his pass rush abilities. Third down and goal from the nine-yard line. Luck going to take off. Down to the one-yard line. Cross into the end zone. It may have been a free play. I think a defensive lineman again. Offside on the defense, number 66. That penalty is declined. Touchdown. And Stewart goes airborne for the score. You know, one of the things the scouts are going to be impressed by, Luck, never out of it, keeps coming, keeps firing. You know, he's a great, great competitor. Those are some of the things, and if we had... That one just did get across. Welcome back to Stanford in the fourth quarter with Kirk Herbstreit and Aaron Andrews. I'm Brett Musburger. It is a 13-point advantage, and Stanford's win streak, the longest in the nation at 17 games, is on the line here. Short kickoff is fielded on the 11 by DeAnthony Thomas, the freshman 
And he is down at the 29-yard line. Irving with James told his uh, his teammates he wanted a, an opportunity to make plays. He was cooped up for the most part early in the game, but then eventually got loose. He had a big run of 58 yards and has really been able to make enough plays here to get this Oregon offense into the end zone. Three touchdowns on the night. It is as simple as that. Barner gets the first carry into the middle, and that's a tough first down run. When you get yardage like that on first down, it gets a whole lot easier for the offense. In which they've not been doing a lot of. And Barner comes in with fresh legs. That's only his third carry on the night. Here comes Barner. Got the first down. Breaks across midfield before Carrington. Defensive back. See, this is where they really, really challenge you mentally because you're down. All you have to do is let up one play and go from 100% effort down to 90% effort. And a guy like Barner gets a seam or a crease and he picks up yards quickly. At the 49 yard line with a first down and 10 and a 13 point lead and 8.40 to go. Milking it down, bringing it to five. Now they got to get ready to. Put it in motion, and the clock is apparently not running somewhere. Clock operator, please reset the game clock to 8 minutes and 30 seconds. 8.30. Chip Kelly just keeps probing, keeps probing. Chip Kelly thinks the game clock should be running. And the referee's going to stop it. The play clock was interrupted. We're going to reset the play clock. To 25 seconds, and the game clock will not start until the snap. Until the snap. So he wants him to go ahead and run it now. From the Cardinal 49-yard line, and it's Barner, like Herbie said, with those fresh legs. And all they're doing is trying to get Stanford to obviously tip their hand with what kind of formation, what kind of coverage they're in. Keeps it himself, and he's got nothing but daylight. Down to the 25-yard line. It's a staple of the offense. Can't just pin your ears down and try to take away the running backs because Darren Thomas has enough athletic ability, and I love how he tried to stay in bounds there. And Barner is stopped by A.J. Tarkin. Boise State's done, so Oklahoma State and LSU. And I know that that Houston story of that quarterback, Keenum, is going to attract game day. And there's a handoff. Barner is stopped, and then uh, after you get done with game day, it looks like you're going to be coming up and join me at Eugene for the USC Oregon game. And that'll be a pretty good football game up there now, USC. Good team. Yeah, that will be a great game. USC again. Kind of a team that's off the radar, but looked impressive today again against Washington. We got a third down and ten. And he keeps the fresh legs and Barner. Checks over. Gonna milk it down a little bit. Walking towards the official. He wants a timeout. He wants the timeout. He'll bring it on down. So now he takes his time out, but he brought the game clock down to 514. While we were away, Herbie, you made a great point now about this Heisman Trophy race. Uh, and you know how much the voters look at teams that are winning. And tonight, Andrew Luck, who was coming in tonight, was a clear-cut favorite. If they end up losing this game, Trent Richardson lost last week. Kellen Moore lost today. Now Maldonado with a 40-yarder. And he's got it. A vote of the way that uh, some of the fellows who are going to vote said they would have luck still with a very big lead on Richardson of Alabama. But of course, Kellen Moore upset by TCU. You have to keep an eye on Whedon and Keenum. You're going down to see Keenum, and they're yeah. both coming on the outside like smoke. So there is the return by Stewart. First down and 10, chance to look at Aaron and the Packers on Monday night on ESPN. And the luck, Toy Lolo, picks up about five yards. They started from the 29 yard line after that Stewart return. And now luck in the in the hurry up. Here we go. 
intercept it. Should have been caught. Instead, it's going to be a pick six. Take it in by the combo. I thought, looking at the play live, that it should have been caught. But we'll wait and take a look at replay here. Uh, it, it looked like it was right in his arms. And I, you know, that's more impressive to me than any number that you could talk about. What Andrew Luck did right there to a true freshman after throwing a pick six, he goes right up to him and he pats him on the helmet. That's more impressive than anything that I've seen all night tonight from Andrew Luck. Instead of being selfish and worried about a pick six, he pats the kid on the back and he says, hey, shake it off. Don't worry about it. That's impressive. And you know, in the stats tomorrow, you look at this, it's another pick six for Andrew Luck. Right in his arms. And so Amino. We had a good return. Fumble! And the Ducks have got it. He's an athlete. He's not afraid. He's in there. Ball is clearly loose. And there's Beard. One of these nights for the Cardinal. When it comes to these turnovers. That's the fourth turnover of the night. They're ready to go back to work. And Trey Carson, talented youngster for the Ducks, is going to see his first action. Freshman out of Texarkana, Texas. And there's your difference in the ballgame. So the Ducks battle themselves right back into the BCS picture. Michael James has to be discussed now when you're talking about a Heisman Trophy. And the Ducks will go home with a chance to win the North and host the first championship game as it has slipped away from Stanford. Control of the North is gone as far as Stanford is concerned and it has shifted to the Northwest. Let's put this up front. This is a very impressive performance by Oregon. I didn't run into anybody who thought the Ducks were going to come in here and blow Stanford's wheels out. I didn't hear that. Fumble! He fanned on the pass, and it looked like a battle for the loose ball. I'm not sure the Ducks didn't jump back. Looked like Massafilo came in from behind and knocked that ball away from Darren Thomas. Let's see if he gets a hand on it. Yeah, he gets he a hand on it, knocks it away. You may stop him for two plays and then give up a 50-yard touchdown. And there is the handoff to Carson, and that is short of the first down. So Stanford will take take over. On this on the line in this game tonight, you talked about the Pacific Northwest and what Oregon's done since Chip Kelly's taken over as a head coach. Terrell fumble, and the Ducks have got it. And that look says it all right there, Got David right. Shaw. On the defense, number 92, it was after the fumble recovery, first down. And Avery Patterson, the nickelback, one of the players that has really improved from behind, knocks the ball loose. So they bring this one to an end. And Stanford has lost control of the Pac-12 North. Don't forget, Pac-12 championship, the winner of this game more than likely will be in position to host that game. It's okay if you say Oregon is in position. It's okay. Is right? it okay to it's say okay that? It's okay you can is say that. that okay. Can I, can I say, can we assume they'll beat Oregon State? <laughs> you can say that they're in position. And we'll find That's out. That's what I'm saying, in we'll position. We'll go see against the Trojans, yeah. okay? USC, Oregon State. But yeah, a chance to host the Pac-12 championship game at Autzen Stadium. So for Arizona State and whoever ends up coming out of the Pac-12 South, eh, they'll have their hands full. Good luck with tickets. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what a great coaching job by Chip Kelly and this entire staff. Hats off to Nick Aliotti and Mark Helfrich. They're the two coordinators. And now let's go down to Aaron with Coach Kelly. Let me ask you first about LaMichael James, three touchdowns tonight. How was he able to eventually get loose in this you know, game? I think when you play a good team like Stanford, it's not going to happen early in the game, but we, we feel like the way we practice, the way we condition is eventually some things will break, and, and that's what happened. But that was a good football team. It was that great game. Good football team, but you continue to be able to find their defense out of position tonight. Why? 
it, it's just, you know, I, I think we got a good team. I think they got a good team. You know, it's, it was a back and forth game until about that last minute when they turned it over a couple of times. But we, we weren't real. We weren't real like we have this thing until about a minute to go in that game. So I know you hate answering questions about the defense. Don't give me a hard time oh, yeah, about listen, this. I love our but defense. I have to ask you about getting pressure defense. on Andrew Luck. How yeah. were you able to make him uncomfortable I, I all think, night? I think our D-line is playing at a real high level right now, and they're doing an unbelievable job. And you got kids like Josh Kadu, Deion Jordan, all those other things. I can't tell you scheme things about our defense, but I can tell you that I love them. And finally, you come in here, you beat Stanford Keys convincingly. What does this do for your chances in the BCS? What do you think? Uh, we got no idea about that. All we care about is being 1-0 on Saturday night. We know we got a really big game next week against USC in our place. And you have no idea. I've said the same thing about the BCS. we, we got to pick our head up sometime in December and see where this thing is. But if we start thinking about that stuff right now, that's not been our formula right now. Our formula is win on Saturday night. We're going to go home. We're watching USC on the plane. And we'll get ready for a big game next week. Thanks, Chuck. Right, thanks. So, Herbie, uh, you know, the Rose Bowl would be a pretty good landing place for these Oregon Ducks now that we think about it. <laughs> sure and would. if they host the winner of the South, they're going to be a big favorite up in Eugene. How about tonight? 63 plays, 53 points. And I know the turnovers helped them. It's 63 plays, 53 points. And we wanted to know the speed versus the size, who would win out? And again, we see it a lot in college football. The speed just too much for Stanford. Slippery field? Why these ducks practice in the rain all the time? No problem, man. No problem. <laughs> Let's just turn the crack attack loose. And the James gang did it here tonight. Big win. 53-30. Ducks are in control of the Pac-12 North. We'll see you in the USC Oregon game next week. Thanks for watching ESPN. Please. The Day.